Battlefield 2042 is finally here. It actually arrived way earlier than I thought with this week long early access because we have EA Play, so it completely threw off our uploading schedule. But yeah, today we are benchmarking this brand new title with a bunch of different budget graphics cards. And oh man, do you need to see this one because this game is not easy to run. We do have a new testing rig, by the way, which I definitely wanna talk about after the benchmarks, but we need to jump into the testing right away. For today's testing on the Nvidia side, we have the GTX 750 Ti, GTX 960, GTX GTX 970, GTX 1050, GTX 1060 3 GB, GTX 1650 Super, and finally the GTX 1070. Over on the AMD side, we only have the RX 460 and the RX 570. Also, we managed to scrape a barely working RX 580 to throw into the mix as well. We'll jump into all of these tests in just a second, but first we gotta thank the sponsor of today's video so we can continue cranking out these videos. Today's video is sponsored by GBG Mall, and they are really stepping it up with the Black Friday deals. For a limited time only until November 30th, my ZTT18 coupon code gives you a huge 30% off discount and that drops the price of Windows 10 down to just 13 bucks. And don't forget that also comes with a free upgrade to Windows 11 when you're ready. I'm still personally not by the way. They also have a really great price on Office 2021 for those of you that might be interested in that. And don't forget that you can buy a ton of other game keys from platforms like Steam, Origin, Uplay, and they even have console stuff like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. All the links you need are down in the description and don't forget to use discount code ZTT18 for 30% off. All right, so just like my other benchmarking videos, I want to start off benchmarking each individual GPU with the specific settings that we would recommend using if this was your graphics card. And afterwards, we'll show a huge chart with the results of every GPU benchmark with the exact same settings. That way we can see how they all compare against each other. Starting on the Nvidia side, we have the GTX 750 Ti and nope, that one didn't work at all. The game wouldn't boot with this GPU and the game just completely crashed. You are not seeing actual 750 Ti footage right now, but just one to mention that we saw other people online having the same issue with budget GTX 700 series GPUs and like I said in the intro this one is definitely a tough title to run. Next up for a card that could actually play the game like barely by the way we have the GTX 960 and the settings that we would recommend using here are 720p and low and even this is still only going to get 46 frames per second. That 1% low is actually not too low so it was somewhat stable but yeah unless you go lower than this you're not going to get 60 FPS on these bigger maps. Next up was one of my personal favorite used GPUs right now of course that being the GTX 970 and here we could get the settings up to 1080p and low and we achieved a pretty solid 62 average FPS. The GTX 1050 2 gigabyte card followed up after that and we had to get back down to 720p and low just like the GTX 960 and here we almost got up to that 60 FPS mark with 57. Getting into our 60 FPS friendly cards though we have the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte and even this one managed to average 61 FPS in 1080p with low settings. Also using 1080p and low settings was the GTX 1650 Super but this one managed to get all the way up to 91 FPS. If you only want to achieve 60 FPS, then you can definitely increase the settings towards medium for this one, but we would still recommend shooting for this higher FPS even if you have a 60 Hz panel. That way it's way more consistent when the FPS does decide to spike down. And for our last Nvidia card, we have the GTX 1070 and the same exact deal with the 1650 Super. In 1080p with low, we got triple digit 100 FPS and you could definitely get this up to 1080p and medium if you wanted to. Switching over to our AMD cards, first we have the super cheap and budget AF RX 4 60 and it produced exactly what you'd expect, super cheap and budget results. And after that was the RX 570 and this one actually performed pretty nicely and 1080p and low, we got over that 60 FPS target mark with 68 FPS, not too shabby. And finally for our last bonus card, we have the RX 580, which isn't actually working properly, but it lasted long enough for us to get a benchmark in. And here are the results that we got with this one with 1080p and low settings. With the individual benchmarks out of the way, let's see how they all stack up side by side using the same exact settings. And for this test, we decided to just keep the settings at 1080p and low and here are the results. As you can see, this one is pretty even across the board in terms of Nvidia versus AMD. Maybe there's a slight AMD advantage as our RX 570 beat the GTX 1060, but these cards can trade blows back and forth depending on the title. You can also see here that if you really want to get anywhere near 60 FPS on these really budget cards, 1080p low is obviously not going to get the job done and unfortunately you're going to have to drop down to 720p. With the benchmarks out of the way, I don't want you to go anywhere. I want to talk about our brand new GPU test testing rig because this thing is absolutely baller AF and it needs some proper camera time. Everything is housed inside this brand new Deepcool CG560 and it's definitely nice to see Deepcool focus on an airflow design case now. Not only are the aesthetics minimal and clean just how I like it, but there's certainly enough room up at the front for some accelerated airflow and that's also thanks to the three RGB fans that comes included with the case. There's also a ton of case fan and radiator support options if you want to step up your cooling game and that's exactly what I did with this also brand new Corsair H150 
MPI Elite LCD. It's cooling the Intel i5-11600KF, and I'm so, so, so happy to see a company other than NZXT come to the market with a customizable LCD screen. Not only is this 360mm AIO delivering some raw performance in the cooling department, but with the IQ software, the aesthetics is completely configurable, which you guys know I like. You can choose to either upload your own design on the screen or display some critical performance numbers like we have here, and this panel is actually an IPS display capable of running at 30 FPS, which is pretty high quality. And moving on, we have some team group products. And first up, they actually sent over this two terabyte A440 SSD. This thing is a monster in terms of performance, but it's also two terabytes, which is great because it allows us to install all of our benchmarking games. The Cardia A440 comes with read and write speeds of 7,000 over 6,900 for this two terabyte model. And I really like how you can choose to either install the beefy heatsink or simply just use the sticker, which is what I decided to do when I was building on my Twitch live stream. I stream every single one of my PC builds over on twitch.tv slash zaxtechnerf, by the way. And if you become an exclusive, AKA a Twitch subscriber, you get a whole list of really useful benefits that our members are really taking advantage of. Not only do you get access to the exclusive AF community, which is where I hang out every single day, but you can also get access to some really cool exclusive channels like the transactional channel, where I actually post every single thing that I buy and sell for my YouTube business. That way you can see how much I'm paying for things and where I'm getting the good deals in real time. Become an exclusive today by becoming a Twitch sub or even a YouTube member gets you access now, we would love to have you over there. Anyway, moving on to the second part that Team Group sent out, this is the ARGB Extreme 2x8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz. And man, this is a seriously sexy kit of RAM. I absolutely love the black glass looking effect that the RGB gives off. They call it full mirror light penetration, but that sounds a little too deep for me. Anyway, thank you Team Group for hooking us up with that. And just to round out this clearly sponsored benchmarking build that I gotta get some parts, some camera time on, the reason we switched our benchmarking CPU from the 5600X is so that we could utilize this NZXT N7 Z590. Thanks to them for sending this one out. And I've said this before, there's just no motherboard on the market that can compete with the clean AF aesthetics of the N7 lineup. And finally, Montec is making all of this possible by powering our components. This is the Century 850 watt PSU and it's rocking that 80 plus gold certified badge. And it's also fully modular with multiple GPU support. And it's rated tier C on the LTT tier list. That obnoxious segment pretty much covered everything, but here's what the entire parts list is looking like. Yes, this is definitely overkill for benchmarking some budget GPUs, but we wanted to make sure that we aren't bottlenecking any of them with the CPU or the RAM. And you know, we just can't use one of those super ugly open air test benches here at the ZTT HQ. And finally, to get back to some Battlefield 2042 content just for a second, our testing method was pretty simple like it usually is, and Sam just entered the default conquest game mode, which is probably the most demanding mode to run. This allows for some seriously huge maps and a ton of players all at once, so this was definitely pushing these GPUs to their limit. We just ran around the map for several minutes to get data as consistent as possible, but this obviously isn't as accurate from card to card as something like a built-in benchmarking tool. And speaking of accuracy, I need to know exactly who is a baller that's still watching at the end of this video. Comment down below starting with the bullseye emoji, that way I know, and seriously thank you guys for being baller and increasing that YouTube watch time average. And if you're still struggling on trying to buy a graphics card, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now because that one will definitely help you out with that. And just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.